Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. So today we are going to discuss about research methodology and IPR subjects, first module and first topic. So far whatever I have given was a brief introduction about the subject and also why we need to do the research, why we need to do research, why we need to follow the research methodology, okay, in terms of doing, in order to do any kind of research, okay. So let's start with the first module. Okay, according to the VT syllabus, we are starting, and most of this particular uh, this syllabus, most of the universities all over India, okay, this particular subject is almost syllabus is same, and also uh, not only in India and in any part of the world, the research methodology is same. Okay, everyone has to follow this kind of. The, there is a kind of methodology that has to be followed in research and it is international standard okay and also IPR will be discussing this subject in detail about the subject and its uh, syllabus everything has already been discussed now today we are going to do the we are going to start the module one that is introduction to research methodology and IPR so the introduction, the first topic is uh, again introducing uh, what is research. So what is research? You might have uh, 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 studied, you might have uh, got to know what is research in my uh, when you see my earlier videos. So according to the syllabus, if you are moving, according to the textbooks which are mentioned in the syllabus, so these all PPTs have been framed. So the first thing is what is research? That means, in the name itself, it is the research. You are searching which is already existing things, right? That means you are searching for a data. You are looking for a particular data, and you are looking for already published data, and then you want to have you want to know if anything is missed out in this particular information. Once you read almost more than hundred papers or fifty papers, you will come to know that the particular uh, concept has not been touched or a particular uh, area which is not been explore, explored much then that is called as your research gap that means we can still do some research laboratory or experimental research in order to fill this gap which is not been done by anyone else so that is what you are going to find out the research gap so in order to find the research gap, we need to do the review of literature. And how to do it? You can go for my previous video in the same playlist. I have explained how to review a paper. Okay. So, here you can see. So, here in this topic, we will study what is research and definitions according to the textbook definitions, how it is explained as research, all those things we will discuss. Let's get it. Let's get started. So now we all of you know what is research. It's nothing but you are finding something which is already existing. You are comparing your data with already existing thing, or you are going to find out something which is not been done so far. For that, you need to do the review of literature and other stuffs. So according to the definitions, okay, which is mentioned in our textbooks, which are which are in the syllabus of BTU. So the research refers to be a careful, well-defined. Or you can say the redefine, maybe the objective, okay, like a particular objective or goal, and systematic method. So, this is very important and systematic method of search of knowledge. You are going to search of knowledge in a particular area which you are looking for, or a formulation of a theory that is driven by the questioning for what that means you are going to question. For that which is known or which is unknown and useful on a particular aspect. So, it has to make an original contribution to expand the existing knowledge base. So, the whole definition is revolving around we need to have a careful, well defined, or redefined, or we should have objectives, and as well as we should have a systemic method. For what? The purpose is to search for knowledge. Or you can formulate. Like formulation of the theory that is being driven by questioning. Okay, if you are when you start questioning, you get a lot of theories, hypothesis, right? For that which is unknown and which, which is usually the unknown, whatever you are questioning might be the unknown. 
you are going to find the answer solutions through the research that is useful on a particular aspect or a area or a field so it has to make an original contribution here when you are speaking about original contribution you are talking about uh, making some original research in the laboratory okay so that you are going to uh, fill that gap which is being found okay which is much which is not much explored so when you fill that gap definitely you are going to expand the existing knowledge base so you are going to expand the existing knowledge base so where to find all these things information what do you mean by this careful well defined redefined finding that formulating and all so it's all is explained in the previous video that is nothing but how to review a paper so definitely you can go we have a lot of tools and techniques we are having a lot of software also nowadays we are having the simple google uh, scholar okay we are having uh, pubmed we are having the ncbi all these databases are there where we can access a lot of question you know papers which is already been published in our area and we can see whether the particular idea what is striped by you whether it is published or not if it is not published then after reviewing even if you find that then this particular work has not been done then you are so lucky so that you can work on that particular field and you can fill that research gap with the original contribution when you do that you will expand the existing knowledge base that means you are going to expand you are going to add on something uh, to already existing work so that is mm, uh, uh, that is the definition of research so research involves formulation of the hypothesis you know all of you know that what is hypothesis hypothesis is something you you got some idea which is in the form of theory but you can correlate with in the particular science or any field of science so logically it should be meaningful so then only we are calling it as a formulation of hypothesis or a proposition uh, proposition of the solutions so whatever already existing problems are there so we are going to propose a solutions and this solution has to be innovative that means it if already someone has already been done it then that won't come under research it has to be something when you do the review you will come to know that a particular thing is not there then only you can say the proposition of the solution uh, and data analysis you are going to analyze the data whatever already the information is available uh, existing uh, so that is called as a data you are going to analyze that data and then you are going to find the particular data Uh, you are going to use it for uh, your own research, and then finally we are having deductions. When you are called, talking about deductions, it's about formulating or you are reading all the uh, n number of the uh, articles or research, and then you are bringing back into the uh, reduced format where and you are narrowing it down to the only particularly the specific field which you are going to uh, which you are looking for, and ascertaining the whether the conclusions fit the hypothesis or not. And not not only all doing all these things, but also you are going to confirm, or you are going to decide, or you are going to have a, a lot of after doing a lot of analysis, you are going to see whether this particular research which I am going to do whether it is fitting the whatever initially uh, the thought is there or the hypothesis what I made whether that is going to fit in a real world. Uh, experimental aspects or not that has to be seen so that's why research involves in a formulation of hypothesis or a proposition of the solution maybe the data analysis and the deductions and ascertaining whether ascertaining whether the conclusions fit the hypothesis or not so research is a process of creating you are going to create something new okay or you are going to modify something which already existing thing okay something else or element you are going to add that brings the research research is a process of creating or formulating the knowledge that does not yet exist okay so go it all so go it all uh, that is a first reference what we are looking for they is our team okay so go it all they explain that the research cycle starts with basically a practical problem so when you want to do the research that means you have to identify any practical problem so as far as my phd is concerned Okay, I had I done my PhD in nanobiotic technology. Where uh, I have, I have my uh, I, what the problem, what the practical problem, what I looked into is the wastage. A lot of waste is coming from the polymer industry. A lot of waste is coming from the textile industry, and also a lot of uh, waste is coming from the 
uh, agriculture industry. I wanted to reduce this industry uh, waste into uh, reuse it, reproduce it, and re uh, sorry, repro recreate it, reproduce it, and reuse it. So that was my idea. So recycle, reproduce, and reuse it. Okay. So uh, with the help of whatever the outline was there, based on that only, I was able to publish a lot of papers, and I got it my my, my PhD done. So here, the basically the research starts with the practical problem. And now once I get this practical problem, one must be clear what is the problem or what the problem, problem being attempted to solve is and why it is so important. So in my case, as I told you, environmental factors, we are having the global warming, every day it is increasing. That is the reason is the agriculture waste have been, uh, the, uh, the farmers are burning because there is no much facilities which is given, given by the governments in most of the countries. Okay. That is the agricultural waste pro waste problem, the chemical uh, textile industry waste problem. We cannot treat it because highly costly, even though there are a lot of rules and regulations being set by the governments, the industries are not following it. Okay. EPA is not uh, you know, uh, uh, taking it as very seriously. All these things will come into picture. And those are also a uh, you know, problem that was wrong. That's why I, my practical identification problem was very important. Polymer industry, because of the polymer waste, is a lot of uh, aquatic animals are dying each day. And it is polluting our environment. And most of the people are burning the polymers after they use. And some of them, 90% uh, of the polymers are non-degradable. They are going to cause a lot of problems. These all things will be there. So basically, identifying the problem, one must be clear that what are the importance, why you are going to choose in this particular field as a particular pro practical problem and how you are going to solve it. So if you don't know exactly how you are going to solve it, you can go for the review of literature and you, are, you can start. Okay. So this problem motivates, this whatever the practical problem is, you know, that problem motivates the research question. And why do I have to do this thing? From where I have to start? Without which one can tend to get lost in the giant swamp of information. So if you are not having the research question, what motivates you to do the research, then you cannot get the proper information because we are all in giant swamp of information. That means a huge, huge amount of information data is there, you know, all available in a lot of uh, you know, databases. You cannot simply randomly say that I will do something, some board problem will do. So you should be knowing that what practical problem you are identifying. You need to identify the problem first and then you see what are the research, what are the advancement or the developments has been done all over the world and then you see if the particular work is not being, uh, the problem is not being assigned in a particular way, you can change that way and you can, that will be your research and you can do that work and you can publish your research in the international journals also. So the question helps, this research question is very important, without that it will be lost. So now the question helps one zero into the uh, manageable volume of information. You can start with your uh, smaller information into the manageable uh, lot of information and in terms defines a research project which is in a, which is an activity or a set of activities that ultimately leads to a result or answers okay which in turn help to solve the practical problems that one started with the first place as shown in the figure that means you are going to have the solution in the end of the research so this is how it looks you start up, uh, you see the practical problem that motivates you to have a research question and that research question will define a research project Okay, when you do the review of literature, it will, it will get back to what, what, where exactly I have done. From research question to re, uh, research project, you have to do the review of literature. Then only it will define a particular problem. And that particular problem you are going to identify, which is not been done, which is not touched by anyone, that will be your research project. And that leads to a, once you work on it, keep on repeating until you get the good results, you will get the results or answer or a solution to the research question. And once you get the answer, result or a uh, no solution to the research question, that will help to solve practical problems. So everything is interrelated. So, so this is called a research flow diagram. Okay. So the building up of a background. So whatever the research has to be done for doing a particular research, that includes one to acquire the ability to connect different areas, 
the purpose uh, definitely uh, if i am from the biological or biology background i cannot simply say that only i cannot simply work on the biology i can i have to work on you know for example the physics because the polymers involved and the properties involved so i have to go through the material science and then biomedical or biomaterials whatever it is so we have to be uh, we have to stick on we cannot stick on to a particular field we need to connect different areas also so the purpose is to prepare the mind for active work as opposed to becoming a respiratory or an encyclopedia that means you need to have all the information to gather so that in order to work up or to give the best research so research is not just about reading a lot of books but finding a lot of uh, or gathering a lot of existing information but instead you should adding you should be adding maybe small or specific or at original contribution to that existing world of knowledge already existing things are there you need to add something to it that is called research or else it will be simply be the review so so the research is about how one poses a question which has a relevance to the particular world that we are living in so and while looking for that answer one has to be as systematic as one can be because you if, you, if there is a problem if you want to solve it it has to be systematic way that's why it is called a research has to be in systematic method that's why we are having research methodology so there must be a balance between what is achievable in the research program with the finite end points that is the proper end result what we are looking for and also the contribution is it is going to make it that means how it is your particular research is going to impact on in, on a society or a particular uh, field or a particular community okay those things uh, plays a very important role the objective of a good research program is to try and gain the insight into something or indeed to try a solve a problem it you, it all says that you need you are going to solve a problem then only you, are, you can call it as a good research so good research questions and develop and throw the project actually and one can even keep modifying them so you can keep on modifying so that every time you modify you get one research article published so through the research one would like to make or to develop a new knowledge about the world around us and it can be written down or recorded in some way and that the knowledge can be accessed through the to that writing or recording so once you do that you can publish this particular whatever you have written out these things so basically when the research can be categorized into three things the ways of developing and accessing knowledge come in three different ways that is somewhat overlapping sometimes in the broader categories observation the process and as well as the models that we will discuss in the next class